The first thing you want to know is what's the IP address of the computer that you're running on. So activity one, find out the IP address of the computer you're running on and write it here. because you're going to need it in a few minutes anyway. So I'm going to demonstrate how to do that. I think we've seen it a couple of times already. So you go to PowerShell. And IP config. Sir, can I get the IP address directly from my router? Yeah, you can. That's right. You can get into your router as well. In fact, we're going to be doing some stuff with the router in a few minutes. But basically, what you should be, another way you can do it here is to say ping A localhost. Because you're going to need the IP address in a few minutes to start accessing some network services on your computer. So whatever works for that to do it is fine. Oh, actually, it's giving me back my name. Have they made some changes here to this? Anyway, I always use TCP IP config. If you want to do something else, go for it. Oh, I sorry, IP config slash all. In fact, what I'd like you to do is dump this out to a text file because you're going to need to reserve to get some other information here as well. So dump this out to some text file somewhere in your file system, and you can just call it myipconfig.txt. I mean, you can call it whatever you want, but just call it some name you're going to remember. So I'm going to do that procedure now. And this little greater than symbol, that's a way in um, Windows that you can send the output from one program to a file. So let's go and open this file that I just created. And there will be some other stuff I need here in a few minutes. In fact, let's go and get several bits of information now. Get your host name. A lot of this stuff you don't really need too much, but here's some stuff which will be quite handy in a minute. Record the following information from your computer. So IP address, host name. So you see you can get the host name from up there. Physical address, that's your MAC address, right? We might, we might need that later on. Get your MAC address. Get your IP address. There it is for me.
Oh, actually, no, I don't. Well, hang on. Because you see, it said preferred. I also have something from VMware. VMware, if you have that, is useless. That's like an artificial, that's an imaginary thing invented by your operating system. So if you have any stanza about VMware, you can just totally get rid of it. I know from my own experience, and if you're not sure what's going on with this, well, that's the purpose of the lab, right? So I know that my connection is going through my wireless LAN adapter. So this stuff up here is actually even nonsense. I don't even know where my, this, this is probably from some other program I'm running somewhere. So I'm going to get rid of that. I actually knew that 10 point something could not be my IP address. Why I knew, and if you get it wrong, it's not going to kill anybody, right? You're not going to break anything. This is just a learning activity. It's just to get you exposed to thinking about this stuff. So you see here, I have a wireless LAN adapter, maybe somewhere on the motherboard of my computer. I don't actually know. I could write software to figure it out from the MAC address, but it's disconnected anyway, so I don't even care about this. And similarly, media disconnected means there is some adapter somewhere in my computer, but it's not hooked up to anything, so it's not working for me, so get rid of it. And a Bluetooth connection, right? You have a Bluetooth to talk to your AirPods or something. If you're listening to this meeting with AirPods, it's probably saying that it is connected, but it's not relevant to my networking, so I'll get rid of my Ethernet adapter Bluetooth. And I know from experience, I just know that the address starting with 192 was the right one. So probably for you it will be as well. Anyway, if you're getting several paragraphs of information being presented, make your own best judgment as to which one is your currently valid IP configuration. And that's why you're doing this to learn, right? If you do something wrong, nobody's going to get mad at you. But um, you see here, there's the concept of lease. And we're going to talk about how leases work with DHCP. I don't know if we'll talk about it today. It won't be on your test. But we will get to this concept of how we lease an IP address via DHCP when we connect to our router or our internet modem. So yeah, I know this is my right one. So here, I'm gonna throw away everything except my Windows IP configuration. I want that and I don't care about this. And your job right now is to just study and look at your IP configuration. And all of that is stuff that could potentially be something useful. See, there's the name of my, it's the kind of um, network interface adapter I have. There's its MAC address. I have DHCP configured. I have auto automatic configuration configured. I have an IP6 address I'm not using, but if I ever hook up to an IP6 server, I could get it. See, that's when I turned my computer on this morning. And on the 15th, if my computer is still running and I don't turn it off and back on, my computer will go back to the router and ask for another IP address. It might even get the same IP address back. But the idea, there's a reason why we periodically recycle IP addresses through the router's DHCP cache that we'll talk about later. IP address six, we're not using for anything. Actually, we're not using it at all in this. Maybe we'll talk about it later, but I'm going to get rid of it. I don't need it now. Link local. And again, it, link local is an older kind of networking, which nobody uses too much anymore, and it's IP6 anyway, so I'll get rid of it. And there's my IP4 address. So that is actually, that's a very important thing. I need to know that. And subnet, we haven't talked about. We'll get to it soon. And there is my lease expiry information. Default gateway is also very important. And my, D see, those are both the um, IP addresses of my router. Here's DHCP version 6, IAID. I don't even know anybody in the world is using that, so I'll get rid of that and that, but DHCP, uh, DNS servers are important, so keep your DNS servers handy.
except these are the LLC, the link layer control addresses for the DNS servers, dynamic uh, domain name servers. And again, they're, they're not really used. The manufacturers put them in, but I don't know if anybody's ever going to use them. I don't care about them too much. So I'm going to get rid of them. But this is kind of the simple stripped down version of what I actually need to know about my computer in terms of getting networking stuff working on it. And NetBIOS over TCP IP, we'll talk about the role of NetBIOS. For a while in the 1990s, NetBIOS was the primary way of doing local area networking. And now it's not really used much for anything. There are a couple of very rare cases where we use NetBIOS. For example, if you have something like a Chrome notebook, I don't know if you know what they are, you can buy them at Costco for like $100. They're very small, cheap, low power laptops and they don't have any hard drive on them. All they do is let you uh, log on to the internet and get to Google, so you can use Google Docs and Google Drive and stuff like that. And um, if for some reason you need to, you, do, you have a computer with no operating system, right? So I do not have an operating system on my computer. You say, Peter, well, if you don't have an operating system, how do you get your computer going? Because I have something called NetBIOS. BIOS is basic input output service. NetBIOS means if I have it configured, and this has to do with um, the boot up sequence of the computer, I'm not going to talk about too much right now, but when you turn on your computer, there's a special program called the BIOS, basic input output service, which is on a special chip on the motherboard of your computer. And when the computer powers up, that program starts running and it looks around, it sees what am I supposed to do, okay. And then it goes to the hard drive and it bootloads the operating system. And after the operating system starts running and takes over, NetBIOS goes, the BIOS chip goes back to sleep. It doesn't do anything after that. So NetBIOS is if you turn on your computer and there's no operating system, and if you've enabled NetBIOS in your BIOS configuration, it will go out to a predetermined, right? It'll go out to a, it'll look to see if it has a network server handy somewhere and it'll load the operating system off the network server. That used to be used a lot with dumb terminals back in the 1960s and 1970s. And then for a while, for many years, it wasn't used by anybody for anything. And now Google Chrome notebooks are using it again. We don't really need to have anything to do with it. It's likely you will never deal with it. But if you ever hear about NetBIOS, just remember it's a way of loading the operating system from a remote network server. So here's kind of the stuff that I actually care about for my lab activity today. So let's copy all of this and you guys can do it now or you can watch the video and do it later. But I want you to put the configuration information from your computer in your lab hand in document because you're going to need these uh, these numbers for some stuff as we go on here. So you see, that's my answer sheet, and I'm just doing that to demonstrate, to give you a sample of what your answers are going to look like. But I'll also go and put it here in my lab sheet because I'm going to need it as I move forward with my lab. So the next thing we're going to do now is fire up some servers. We're going to get some servers running on our computer and we're going to use Wireshark and Nmap to examine what happens when we use um, servers on our computer. We're going to see how data goes through ports. But it's about 9 o'clock now. We've been going pretty hard for about an hour. Let's give it a break till 9.20. When we come back, we'll, we'll resume going on this. And I think we're going to go till about um, a couple of minutes before 11, and then we'll, we'll break off. We'll take a break, and then from 11 till 12, or what did I say, like 10.45 till 12, we'll write the quiz. Anyway, we're on break until 9.20 right now.
Excuse me, sir. Just sit there. You've already been through your walk. Just sit there and rest. 